Hey guys and welcome back to the Queensland High School Esports League. My name is Mitch Re no, Mitch Replays Anderson. <laughs> and I'm joined of course by my co-caster, Max Formal Von Newman. How are you going today, Max? Yeah, I'm doing great. I, I am remembering my name. It's Maximilian <laughs> Thor Von Newman, also known as Formal. And today we're actually joined by George here, also known as 99.95 ATAR. Yep, that's right. Yeah, George here was a participant of the Melbourne High School uh, team last year in the uh, High School Esports League. He was <laughs> Uh, Semi-finals, national champion, and yep. of course a uh, uh, state champion as well for Victoria. Champion. So um, we've got him on desk to ask some questions. He'll be joining us for the cast today as mm -hmm. well. Um, so first question I want to ask you, of course, is what was it like uh, being in that high school environment, meeting all those uh, new friends and forming those bonds with your teammates? Oh, well, because uh, I was a year 12 and then we, all our teammates were a year 11 pretty much. So it was fun to get to know each other more and, you know, get to know your underclasslings and forming a great friendship and bond overall throughout the event. Yeah, I, I actually I want to dig a little deeper into that because obviously esports in high schools is sort of a new phenomenon, mm -hmm. and your school was one of the most successful as well as one of the first to participate in a high sports high high school esports league. Yeah. So how did it cart? Like whose idea was it? Was it the students? Was it a teacher? Did someone find it online and bring it up with everyone? Or uh, so one of our year 11s brought it up, and then we kind of just joined the team, and then we started talking with teachers, and we found a teacher that was really supportive. His brother was a half professional Dota player, I believe, mm -hmm. so he was extremely supportive of the whole event, and you know we just became this uh, new thing, you know, high school in uh, esports. Yeah. Yeah. And then so when going through the process, was it sort of anyone who volunteered got to play? Were there tryouts? Was there coaching? How involved did the school actually get? Oh, well, so our players, we only ended up with maybe five or six players. So everyone just kind of chose their most comfortable and we rolled from there. And then from that, I got a couple of my friends to uh, join for the coaching because one of them really liked to analyze and stuff. <laughs> but then he ended up joining us as our AD carry throughout the second half of the split. So, okay. Was nice. a, yeah. so what do you think your best moments were or your favorite experience from the whole uh, uh, tournament you did last year? Well, it's definitely playing at the Melbourne Esports uh, tournament uh, at the live stage under the lighting at the audience and the whole kind of vibe about the thing and you know when you finally win that final team fight to finish to close out the series that was the best yeah. feeling. Yeah I would like to actually again go into a bit more detail because the Victoria State finals last time was held at the Melbourne Esports Open which yeah. was a live event live crowd you were on stage with the computers mm -hmm. was that like a new experience for yourself and the team and how was that what was the prep like for I mean it's, it's something very unique and I'd like to hear more about it. Uh, well definitely so um before we always played at home or you know just uh, met online and just like played from our house and then somebody had lag and we had to pause the game and stuff <laughs> like that. So uh, when we found out that we were playing, I just told my team we have to win the semifinals to make it into the finals to play at this uh, live event. And once we got there, it was a great experience. I walked down the stairs, my team was waiting there for me, our coaches were waiting there. We had our setup, our, our equipment, our PCs, keyboards. And once we sat down and then we just kind of got into the zone, we, had, we saw the audiences in front of us and yeah. someone's got a bit nervous, but once the game starts kicking, and just start getting used to it. And the live cheers were from the crowd were probably one of the best like momentum boosting mm -hmm. effects of the live event. So you could actually hear them then through the soundproof? Yeah, it was, it was like that? white noise, but when you get that first blood, the crowd audience, and I had um, some mates cheering from the side, uh, shout out to <laughs> Phil Tran. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, and then so uh, they were down there, I could hear their screams from a mile away. Yeah, it must be absolutely incredible having that whole live audience behind you and everything. Last question I kind of want to ask you is, um, what are you doing now that you've, you know, obviously gone through the high school program at school and, you know, where are you uh, at the moment? Oh, well, uh, so after VC finish, I got my ATAR, not 99.95, unfortunately. <laughs> but so um, that, that scores a lie. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a lie right here. But um, I made it into dentistry at UQ and currently, you know, going into state for university and enjoying my new dental life. Yeah. So how have you actually found that transition, I suppose, from high school to UQ, especially, I guess, coming from a more gaming background? Because you would have spent a lot of time yeah. with League of Legends in this sport, obviously. Mm -hmm. I mean, you made it all the way to the national semifinals. Mm -hmm. Yet you still found time to study, you still got into dentistry, which is a harder course to get into. Yeah. It's very yeah. strenuous academically. Mm -hmm. How have you found that transition? Like, did you find any experience from, like, you know, the high school team environment yeah. sort of helped at all? or? Well, definitely uh, we uh, worked together a lot in the dentistry <laughs> group for our assignments and, you know, team, team, uh, teamwork and you know, just relationship and how to deal with people. And so overall it was a great experience. And, you know, moving from high school to uni, I had to spend a lot more time studying. So league is uh, more casual now. But, yes, yeah, uh, I would say that uni is definitely enjoyable more than yeah. stressful. I yeah. actually want to continue talking about the uh, national semifinals and that, if that's yeah, all right with you, because... Mm -hmm. 
obviously when you play on a stage for the state finals, that would have been huge. But then mm -hmm. you, when you take it to the national level, like yeah. that's sort of the next level. Obviously, you didn't make it to the final, which yeah. is unfortunate, which would have been in Sydney yeah. in the studio, mm -hmm. one game off. But mm -hmm. as you're like climbing that rank, you do get to get noticed, I suppose, by like other you know semi-pro professional players. Did you have any special interactions or experiences oh, with them? Oh, definitely. So um, to prepare for our nationals, uh, I got into a Discord with the OPL and OCS teams and with all their coaches. I kind of um, told them that we're kind of a new high school team and we're kind of playing serious now. So we want some uh, leadership and guide uh, guide to us. And so we had a lot of um, coaches around just to offer us to scrim and teaching us and kind of like watching our replays and giving us notes. So uh, that's one thing I would suggest to these um, high school teams around to mm -hmm. reach out into the pro players. Uh, don't be scared. They will be very interested to help because yeah. the scrims and notes we had were very helpful to our, to our gameplay. Yeah, and that's something I want to actually embellish on as well for a lot of the players in this tournament. Last week, especially on stream as well, OCS players have been watching our stream and have been commenting. <laughs> yeah, of course. And I've spoken to a couple of them, and they are available. If you reach out and talk to them, I'm sure they would be happy to help their teams like as much as they can. Middle of the OCS season, so they might be a bit preoccupied. Mm, but of course. the fact is, OC like as a region, we are a smaller region. We are a friendly region, so if you reach out, people will speak back. So I think that's good advice. Go out yeah. there, talk yeah. to people, and see what you can learn. Yeah. Or talk to Mitch as well. Like yeah, he's, course, he's yeah. always there talking <laughs> to try and help you guys out. So Yeah, no matter what, uh, on the Discord, obviously, drop us a question. You know, Obviously, for your kids, uh, as you're finishing up high school, most of the year 12s now, of course, mm -hmm. when you move into university life, is a whole other uh, realm of opportunities, especially here at UQ. Yeah, it is. Speaking of UQ as well, though, have you actually had a chance to check out that esports room yet? Oh, yeah. I've dropped by a couple of times, invited by my friends. Uh, I just got to say, it's uh, one of the most impressive things I've seen around. The vibe and the general just environment and all the machines around. And you just can just really get together and just uh, be a team. Yeah. I feel like we've been talking about this yeah. room actually quite a bit on this uh, broadcast. I think next week we're going to do something a little different. We might actually go check it out and show all of you exactly what that's like. But that won't be until next week. No. And so course. we need to continue with this week right now. And we actually have a very interesting match today with SPC C Colors taking on Craigsley 1. These yeah. are two of the teams on top of the ladder, the number one and the number four position uh, retrospectively. What are, you th what are your thoughts going to this? Like, what do you guys want to see? What sort of matchups are we going to be looking for today? I mean, I'm very interested to see SPCC play again because obviously we saw them in like the first broadcast, mm -hmm. um, and they, you know, did play against an opponent that probably wasn't the same skill level that they were. Because uh, mm -hmm. SPCC, the team on the blue side today, up in the top lane you got Hey I'm Yellow in the jungle, Hey I'm Black in the mid lane, Hey I'm Purple in the AD carry position, Night Watch, and then in support JFK is AFK. Um, yeah, but you know, SPCC were they won very convincing as you see down the bottom they haven't lost a game yet they've <laughs> undefeated so far and their first game against unity that we did watch was very convincing it was like a 20 minute 21 minute yep. victory i think and um seeing how they've progressed throughout the whole tournament obviously losing their uh, first game last week yep. is kg4 is you know if you see how they mounts back of course versus another strong team in craigsley yep. but i think they'll be used to it since they've been versing pretty much the best team the entire time yeah i'm very curious to see how they'll be able to bounce back in this one as you mentioned we haven't seen them since that first week up against uh, unity lull which was i don't want to call it a fair match spcc was clearly of a higher class no 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 offense to unity lull it's one of the drawbacks i suppose to having a tournament system yeah. such as this where as we get further in the tournament we're seeing more and more even matches so there were a couple rocky stars but since that they've been just on a tear winning game after game after game after game and finally last week they lost so now all of a sudden how do you bounce back from that mentally I mean you competed in similar circumstances yeah. granted I don't think you actually faced any losses until the very no, end but too. how as a team how did you recover <laughs> from that loss Oh, well, our team took it, I would say, not too hard because um, it was nearing exam session, so we all had to, we knew that we needed to study on, um, you know, <laughs> actually exams. So we kind of, um, so after we lost, uh, everyone took a break from it. But overall, after, we kind of um, jumped back and then we're still good friends right now. And we've made a uh, new league happen and teams happen in Melbourne High for the next generation. So yeah. I think we took it as a learning experience. Exactly. And then moving on from SPCC Colors, their opponent is going to be Craig's Lee 2. Crazy one. Crazy, Crazy one, one, I believe. It's the number one. They are the top team. They've only lost one game as well. In the top lane, it's OGG. AD carry smells in the jungle. Give me Vlad playing mid lane. I'll be curious to see if he actually gets his Vlad. Uh, Kung Fu <laughs> Monk in the AD carry position. And Summer SP830 in support. 
similar to the colors. They've also only dropped one game. I believe their loss was to SPS Legacy uh, two weeks ago. So they've yeah. already bounced back. They pulled off a big win against uh, Somerset. I think that was a forfeit. Was it a forfeit? Yeah, oh, it was a forfeit. Okay, last two so. Weeks of exams. Okay, so. Okay, <laughs> knowing that, then that might be a little difficult. So both these teams are actually trying to bounce back yeah, from a loss. Yeah, bounce back from a loss. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think Craigsley, I mean, obviously we haven't seen them play yet, but, um, you know, they looked like their roster's pretty strong. I think, obviously, you know, at the top of the ladder, so they're doing quite well, and they've had some decent teams, you can see <laughs> they've been playing uh, TSS, one of those teams, kind of uh, towards the top end of the pack. Yep. Uh, Kelvin Grove as well, they've got many teams, in they've got a lot of variety there. Yep. Uh, but, yeah, obviously it's going to be interesting to see how these two teams match up. But before we talk too much about those two, we have actually prepared a couple mm -hmm. of questions you guys asked on uh, Discord over the past week, um, and I believe... Yep, we answer them now. So the first question you guys asked was, what do you think the hardest champion to balance in the game is? That's a tricky one because it comes down to this debate of like, are you balancing it for competitive play or for more casual solo queue play? I think they're two totally different experiences. And as a result, I would say the hardest champions to balance are sort of the ones that almost struggle in both. So, like, instinctively, I want to say, like, something as Ivern or sort of those bizarre yeah. ones like Bard. But I somehow feel that each of you are going to disagree with me on that. Yeah, I mean, you like to answer first, Josh? Oh, uh, well, for me, um, I believe it's the champions that only the pro players can bring out their true potential. Yeah. So mm -hmm. champions like Tom Kench and uh, champions like Faker's Rise, for example, those will be the hardest to balance as... Um, the pro players are there to unlock the champion's potential. Mm. And in solo queue, you really don't get that. So if um, Riot decides to buff the champion solo queue, then you know, pro players like Faker would just run wild, uh, wild and amok with these champions. Yeah. So it's just a really easy thing. Uh, maybe you, know, you could have two separate patches, one for pro player, one for normal solo queue players. Mm. Uh, we could see where this goes. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I think Ryze and Azir are like two of the hardest champions to balance in the game because they're either you know, really, really bad in solo queue or super busted in pro. I think Akali's one of those champions as well. It's like that. just those high skill cap yeah. champions where you really have to be playing the champions super efficiently to be able to effectively execute them on fully. I just like, you know, because Ryze is like, what, 42% win rate in solo yeah. queue and then in pro play he's like around 75%. He, he, he's a top tier pick. He's yeah. literally, yeah. like he's pick band 100% pretty much. Actually, I want to change my answer a bit. I'm just going to say whoever is the most recently released champion <laughs> is the hardest to balance. Because I feel it always is sort of like a grace period where they're either super yeah. overpowered or super, super weak. Especially yeah. when the champion is reworked. Like take Orn, for example, when he first came out, he was super weak versus something like Akali or Aurelia or after, or Zoe. <laughs> when they Zoe. come out and they just start decimating everything else Summoner's Rift. So I, I'm going to change it to whoever is the most recent release champion. So I'm going to preemptively say Yumi. Yumi is going to be the hardest one to balance. <laughs> uh, speaking of new champions, uh, the next question for you guys was, what is the first champion you guys all mained or played when you first started getting into League of Legends? Mm, I'm going to go last because I don't think people are going to like my answer. Right. <laughs> <I'm gonna> go <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I started playing League back when I was in grade 4, I believe. My Jeez. first champion was Kog'Maw. I remember oh. very clearly because I died a lot and I could use the passive. <laughs> the passive. Yep. <laughs> maximizing the tools yeah. given to you. Yeah, I'm maximizing the champion, unlocking <laughs> the real potential that normal players just can't. Yep. And then after that, my first main would be Teemo. Teemo. <laughs> Would you like to I'm riding the Teemo train. Yeah. First main as well as Teemo. Uh, we're going old, old school. We're talking Frozen Mallet, Madrid's Blood Razor mid Teemo. Yeah. You, you get to lane before your opponent. You go invisible in the middle of the lane. Let them shove a wave. It's okay. You don't need that CS. No one knows what they're doing anyways. Mm -hmm. And just wail into them. Get that surprise first blood. There you go. Lane one. My god. I mean, me personally, <laughs> I started playing in Season 6, just, just after the Assassin's Special. Well, season 7, technically. Because mm -hmm. I was like pre-season Season 7. And the first champion I mained was Katarina. I played Katarina, then Aurelian Soul, and then I went to jungle and played the uh, pre-rework Rengar, or the, yeah. not old Rengar, because old Rengar is the same one as the one now, but you know, the one with mm. the swipey Q, and then Warwick. Yeah. But if you go back to when I first started playing the game, I actually started playing in year nine. I think I played for like three weeks, and I played Yi top with Ignite Ghost. AP? No, 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 it was, no. It was AD Yi. Oh, that's I, 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 no, I didn't, actually, I think I played a full game without buying any items. So you were playing the, yeah. the Chinese boosting strat Chinese boosting before strat. it existed. Exactly, that's a big brain, big yeah. brain right here. I mean, I think I on with that though. I think if we're going to start talking about actual mains, like not sort of cheese main Teemo, because I was coming from Dota and Venomancer, so yeah. it was similar. But when I actually started playing seriously, I did start playing Jenna 
mostly as my main, mm. mostly because of a very, very old Reddit post. It was like how to win games, and it was like a picture of Janna, a picture of Boots, and a ward. And I'm like, this is one, two, three, easy, set, and done. Let's go. And I put that to effect, and it was surprisingly effective, except for in the games when people didn't understand what a support was and start flaming me for not helping get CS or anything like that, or, oh, it's new Janna, 0, 2, 20, no kills, what are you doing? I'm like, my God. <laughs> I mean, and so following up, the last question you guys ask is kind of follows on for that last question. What champions are you playing now? What roles are you kind of playing? See where we've evolved from when we first started off in League to now. All right. I mean, well, now I mostly play Phil, which means jungle or support, I guess. You know, the roles yeah. no one wants because, again, people don't like getting flamed when they don't get kills, and everyone likes to flame the jungler. So if you want to rage at someone, hey, I'm right here. Uh, <laughs> I'm loving Jarvan. Jarvan at the yeah. moment, I feel, is just so versatile. You can take him as an assassin, you can take him as a tank. He has early gank pressure. He still contributes in a late game team fight. He's just that all around great pick. Mm. And when he gets banned away, give me my Nocturne. <laughs> just give me my Nocturne. Classic we'll be fine. What are you? Oh, well, I actually roll switch to ADC because I started enjoying the micro plays yeah. and uh, just a high attack speed. That's why I kind of um, got into. And recently been maining Lucian because of you know, Gunslinger, yeah, the of cinematic, course. and the animation canceling. Everything just clicks so well to me. Yeah, yeah. just one of those things super fun. I mean, me personally, I just started playing, I've been playing pretty much Jax Yasuo. So not too much different from where I first started with the Katarina. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I've been like, my solo queue is big off at the moment. Please don't look at my match history. <laughs> don't look it up. It's not good. It's Yasuo. It's, it's exactly what you expect from a Yasuo. One game is 1.13, the next is 13-1. But, you know, that's fine. Extremities, no middle ground. Int or carry. Int or carry, simple. Yeah. All right, follow-up question to that one, just for fun. Uh, which is the champion you were least likely to play in solo queue right now? Who do you oh, just God. not want to touch? There's so many champions, it's not funny. Mine's going to be a surprising one because of how strong it is at the moment. Mm -hmm. Kennen. I have oh, yeah. never been able to have a good game on Canon. I don't know what it is. I always just feel completely weak and useless. And it's unfortunate because he is a top lane monster right now. Yep. The amount okay. of damage and lane pressure he seems to be putting out is like off the charts. And I just cannot do it. I, I'm sorry. I am no the shy or any other wonder or any other famous top laner. Mimic even. <laughs> <laughs> Not at that level. No, 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 no. <laughs> God, I don't even know. That's a hard question. <laughs> There are so many champions I just don't want to play ever. <laughs> like, pretty much any support, I don't want to play that. Any AD carry, I can't play those. <laughs> and like, I don't want to play, ta oh God. I don't know. If there's one champion I hate more than anything else, it's probably Brand. I dislike that champion with all my heart. I love Brand. I hate, Brand I and Zyra, Brand. I dislike immensely. Brand and Zyra are Because like I hate it when you go support and they build full AP. And then, <laughs> ah. Or like artillery mages, I hate playing against Xerath and Lux. Mm. Those are probably so that's like my entire those four. I just, I'm not support saying. and mid pool are just <laughs> not complying. What about you? What are the champions? Oh, uh, well, mine is um, for Alistair. Alistair. I just don't want to play him. <laughs> I got a bit traumatized from my team's uh, Alistair support back in GGZL <laughs> last year. A bit of uh, PTSD building up and I just don't really want to touch a champion. Don't want to get flamed. The, really. classic, the classic flash, <sighs> Q nothing, W them out of the team fight. Yeah. Love that. Danny Azez, I'm looking at you. <laughs> <sighs> As we got a minute in before we jump into game, gentlemen, do we have any last minute predictions for this game? Who do you think is going to win? I actually, I'm going to say Craigslee. Craigslee? I'm going to take a bold stance right here and say Craigslee. I think on paper, SPCC does look like the stronger game um, team. But they're coming off a more recent loss. Mm. I feel pressure might be getting to them a bit more. I know from what we saw in that first week, they're definitely an emotional team from yeah. how they played. Like they were very aggressive and they were sort of riding their successes. And I don't know and if they have that capacity to bounce back after yeah. a tough loss. So I'm actually gonna go with Craig's lead. They've had an extra week to sort of warm up and prepare for this game, uh, refresh their mindset after yeah. their own loss. So I'm expecting to see a bit of an upset today. What about you, George, knowing absolutely nothing about these two teams? <laughs> well, I'm going to go with the one that sounds cooler with the team name scheme, uh, the Colors team. Yeah. yeah. You know, just sounds like more like a team. It sounds like more they're bonded, you know? Better uh, teamwork. Bonding like paint colors, right? Yep. I mean, I think I'll go with Max. I think, I think I'll go with Craigsy for the win here. I mean, I, obviously, I haven't seen Craigsy play yet. Um, but I had a look at their match histories and their solo queue. It doesn't look too bad. Obviously, also, they've been winning against some decent teams, but it will be a really interesting match to see how they go against SPCC. I just, 
I just there's a couple of doubts in my mind from the first week against SBC. Obviously, it's a long time ago, and we'll yeah. like to see how much they've improved. We're jumping into Champion Select now. Yeah, here we are into our picks and bans for our first ever TriCast here at the University of Queensland, bringing you the high school League of Legends from the state of Queensland, and Aurelia will be our first ban. Busted champion, removed from game, simple. <laughs> well, the thing about these champion select is that because these players aren't um, professional, you won't be seeing professional bans. Mm. You'll be more likely to be target bans. Yeah. So it's yeah. uh, interesting to see which lane they prioritize right now. So right now we're seeing Aurelia and Jack. So most likely it will be a focus towards mid and top lane. Yeah. Yeah, I like the idea of trying to ban away some more of those flex picks champions as well. You, If you don't really know what you're going to be up against, Especially when it gets picked, it's like crap. Not only do we not know he can play this, we don't know where it's going to go. Is that going to be from the mid or the top? So getting rid of those flex picks, I think, is smart. It narrows what your opponents are going to be able to do, and maybe force them into a sort of champ select that your team can counter and sort of strike back against. Kaisa being banned away, as well as a Shaco and a Jax and a Brom. The Brom one surprises me. I mean, JFK is a champion, which is a Brom main, and I know for a fact that the Heian Black is a like 170 game shaker player. Yeah. So just those simple target bands yeah. as George said before. Yeah, in this ELO, it's all about targeting down what your opponents want to play, get them off their comfort picks, uh, and hopefully grab some of your own so you can just win the lane no matter what the matchup is, right? It'll be interesting to see what um, SPCC decides to pick for their first pick. We have Ergot. Ergot. I like that Ergot pick, actually. I'm Again, it's kind of flex because there has been that rise of Urgot jungle. I'm not sure if it's still as meta prevalent as it was a couple weeks ago. God, uh, no. no, it's gone. <laughs> now it's, it's gone. Completely gone. Okay. Well, in response to what we were saying, Nautilus, and now that's something that we've definitely been seeing arise. I can say for a fact, we've been mm. seeing Nautilus mids, we've been seeing Nautilus supports, even the odd Nautilus top. And to go with it, a was it going to be Vladimir? Okay, we're just sort of flicking through. I believe his name is Give Me Vlad. Give Me Vlad. Yes, I mean, Give Me Vlad. Ban it. Give Him Vlad. Do it. I don't know, I mean, going back to Nautilus, oh, Nautilus yeah. is a great pick that you could flex between, obviously, the mid-top and the support role. I think definitely his strongest role is support, yeah. especially paired with something like that Ezreal. Super safe lane. And Nautilus, of course, can pretty much not die. I think there's not many bot lanes that beat Nautilus, Ezreal. Nautilus, Ezreal just seems that perfect mix of safety as well as aggression, if need be. You have, like, the hard engage coming Ooh. out of the Nautilus as well as the peel, the self-peel from Ezreal. Okay. So I do like that ball lane. Kane getting locked in. That's a very strong solo queue jungle. Ooh. Kane, I mean, uh, locking in Kane here forces uh, SPCC colors into having to draft really strong mid laner, and hopefully the, the Urgot doesn't get countered too hard up in the top lane. Um, they need a really strong bot lane as well. With the Galio, it's very easy to pair with something like a Lucian. Because with Kane, early game is not going to have any impact at all, so you need to have winning lanes to help the Kane get through, similar to something like a Zac. That said, right now we're seeing, and once again, a lot of hovers. It, I believe that will be the Aatrox locked in. There it is. So it is the classic top lane matchup, at least on paper at the moment, of Urgot versus Aatrox. Now, we've seen a lot of different renditions of this over the past year and a half. At the moment, who would you give the advantage to, either the Urgot or the Aatrox? Uh, I will give it to the Aatrox because mm. I believe he was um, reworked or patched last, this patch? Yeah, yeah like this patch. Mini uh, so now uh, Aatrox is being shifted back into the old Aatrox, kind of more healing, kind of this uh, team fighting monster that just can't die with all the healing he gets. And Urgot will be seeing a lot of um, nerfs come coming from him because of his uh, preeminence in uh, pro play. So it would be interesting to see um, if this Aatrox decides to uh, go for the uh, aggressive early game for mm -hmm. like um, Yomi moves and Lethality, or he will go for team fighting like Death Dance into um, Black Cleaver. I'm kind of hoping he goes for that aggressive early game just because no aggressive early junglers <laughs> have been banned yet, and Craigsley have yet to select their jungler right now. Like I'm still seeing Lee Sin's available, Xin Zhao is still available. Jarvin is still available, and you could go for that sort of aggressive Jarvin play that we were talking about before. So I still feel as if Craigsley has a lot more options right now, whereas SBCC Colors, they're sort of narrowing into like a very specific team comp at this stage. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they just have to make sure they keep this lane out. I do like the Aatrox pick as well into the... I gotta think Aatrox wins are pretty hard just because of the way they changed it to be more auto-attack based. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it depends how the Ergot can these cues. I think Nightwatch is gonna be interesting to see what he picks here. I think I do like the um, Zion... Uh, Lucian bands, really good bands. Mundo up on the top side. Mundo. Maybe it's Aatrox mid. It could I be Aatrox mid. I find it more interesting how um, SPCC decided to ban away the Jarvan, considering mm -hmm. they've locked in the Galio. Yeah, yeah, because that's Because yeah. they had the chance to pick ja uh, Jarvan Galio within the pick, but they decided to go with K. But I, just, I guess they were too scared of the engage coming from um, Grizzly yeah. with uh, Nautilus into Jarvan. That would be decimating. I feel like if AD carry Smells have, would have been able to get the Jarvan, it could have been catastrophic for SPCC. Well, yeah, like Instead, that. they're looking in mm. the Varus and the Malzahar. This is a very interesting comp coming out of SPCC. I, I'm, like, 
I'm not seeing a hard engage for the yeah. Gallo to ulti, which is a bit concerning. Maybe the cane is you like roll yeah. on the cane to ulti someone and then pop out, but I think it's just very unreliable. Maybe we could be seeing blue cane from the bus he's received lately. Yeah. Uh, eight seconds cooldown on his E. Maybe you can sneak around the back and into a Galio ult, so that could be a possibility as mm. well. But overall, we can see that um, SBCZ has a more engage heavy team comp, whereas mm -hmm. um, Craigsley has pretty much uh, Nautilus, and that's it. They yeah. have also, that's it. They opted to go for the Xin Xiao jungle in the end. So there's that aggressive jungler I was hoping to see out of Craigsley as well. It makes me think that Aatrox is definitely going to be going heavy damage and I expect them to be putting a lot of pressure on that mid lane as we're still waiting for the last members to switch. I'd be very surprised if we're seeing an Ezreal jungle with the Xin Xiao Nautilus bot. I mean, I did have an Ezreal jungle in my solo queue game like two days ago. But that was fun. <laughs> and also we're seeing that instead of the Aatrox and Urgot match we're expecting, it's actually Mundo up yeah, in the yeah. top lane with Urgot. And Mundo is one of those very safe champions where you can just cleave a farm. So we mm -hmm. might be seeing uh, Mundo just farming to tank up while maybe Aatrox goes uh, aggressive onto the Malzahar and getting the early leads. I'm a go. little <laughs> bit worried though, because with Mundo and Urgot, I feel like it's going to be hard for Mundo to really establish that split push mm. into mm. the Urgot. No, there's, uh, there's no split push. It's always uh, Mundo getting shoved in. Yeah. yeah. So it'll probably just be Mundo trying to farm, get the CS he can, and then tank up for uh, mid game. For mid game. but. One of the biggest problems I feel with Mundo though is that he doesn't really provide a lot of that team fight utility. So I'm kind of curious what their plan is around this Mundo. I feel like the Mundo would be, uh, his best job would be just to distract the backline of SPCC while the frontline locks down the enemy with um, a Nautilus ulti into Ezreal combo with yeah. Xin Zhao Cha knocking every, disrupting the team fight. Mm. But then again, on SPCC, we have very aggressive. We have Galio to protect anyone if needed. And we also have um, Malzahar to lock down a single target yeah. with um, continuous of uh, Varus into yeah. Kane knockup. And we just have a lot of engage and CC across the board from both teams. Yeah, I feel like especially Malzahar, once he gets his Tank shredding items online, obviously he's old in them as well as the percent HP multiplier on it. So mm -hmm. if Mundo ever tries to get into this backline, the, um, once he gets Rylai's plus Morello's plus um, Haunting guys, it's going to be very hard for the Mundo to it'd be shredded pretty quickly by Mal's. I don't know, I, it's, it's interesting because on one hand they have a lot of engagers like Mal's a half flash ult, they have Ergot ulti, they have Varus ulti, and they have Galio ulti. Um, but I think Galio this game we will always peel the Vara, peel the Vara, sorry. Yeah. Um, but I think definitely a lot more lane dominant style out of um, Craigsley. Ezreal's going to win that 1v1 against the Varus. Obviously, Mundo's going to get shoved in, but as long as he gets tanky, farms up, gets his items, it won't be too big of an issue. Xin Zhao's going to have permanent priority over this Kane, and then Aatrox will, hard, will uh, beat the Malzahar early on until Malzahar can get his lost chapter or get blues. I still feel as if, though, Hay and Purple should be able to farm in that mid lane. Yeah. Same with Nightwatch. I feel like, yeah, they might be getting pushed in, but they're not going to get pushed in and harassed to the extent that they're going to completely lose mm -hmm. lane. I, oh, sorry, no, you, you Well, yeah. okay, continuing on with that point, that kind of makes me feel Craigsley. I'm worried they're going to start to feel that pressure early, and I yeah. could actually see them making some sort of going too aggressive. Mm. I would not be surprised if we see, this is a bold prediction, I would not be surprised if we see a failed tower dive at around the eight minute mark in this game. That is, that's a, that big, is, that's a big prediction. I, I'm calling the time and I'm calling the area. I'm gonna say it's gonna be a bot lane tower dive at about eight minutes and I'm really worried they're gonna fall into that trap. Mm -hmm. Well, I feel like uh, the most volatile lane in this matchup would be the Aatrox versus the Malzahar mm -hmm. because um, Kang is not the strongest early game champion and we have Xin Zhao picked for the red side and red side uh, Xin Zhao are known to go for that level 2 red, um, like blue to red to straight up gank mid. Yeah. So I, I, we could be seeing a very uh, quick first blood mid lane. But Aatrox has also opted to not take Ignite for this lane and instead go teleport. So I have both our mid lane and top lane for both teams playing more of that team fight oriented playstyle. So, you know, as um, Formal said, we could be seeing a, a five man bot get, um, <laughs> with um, two teleports on both teams. So maybe um, a lot of, uh, you know, five man bots. Yeah. yeah. Classic solo queue sadness. I mean, I think <laughs> uh, when you look at these cars, I think SBC cars have a much better front to back comp. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, you yeah. see the Malzahar and the Varus at the back, you've got the tanks at the front, and the Kane is going to run around. Whether he goes Shadow Assassin or um, Rost, it's going to depend what his play style is going to be like. On the other team, you've got you know Ezreal, Nautilus, Aatrox, and of course the Mundo that want to have a more chaotic fight, want to be jumping around in between uh, all the different uh, characters and trying to isolate the Varus and the Malzahar. Yeah. So it's going to be very interesting to hear how these teams both set up their team fights yeah. and yeah. kind of um, execute them effectively, because I feel like mm -hmm. these fights go one way or the other no matter what's going on if yeah. the fight's in the right condition. Uh, I was just going to say, though, are SPCC playing with a time limit just based on the compositions before they become so. online? 
before they become uh, a little bit, a little bit. Not because really. so really, it should be. Do Craig's Lee have a time limit to really get that lead and then start to snowball it? Because just yeah. on the team compositions alone, like SPCC, I feel is the team that gets stronger the later yeah. we go, yeah, with definitely. the exception of the top lane. Yeah. Mundo will become a monster yeah. late, uh, but kind of not really. But you still have the tank shred and I suppose. Matches. I mean, yeah. Conqueror on Urgot, he can definitely still yeah. match up yeah. with Mundo. I think basically, I mean, because when those one of the champions still gets, he gets hard countered by Grievous Wounds. Yeah. So even though late game he's a monster, if you get Grievous Wounds on the Varus or the Malzahar, there isn't really much he can do. He gets shredded pretty quickly. Um, <laughs> yeah, because just I mean Varus, especially if it's lethal tempo Varus yeah, as yeah. well. It'll just um, once he gets a mortal reminder, there won't be much the Mundo can do. The point though I was trying to get to is how long does Craigslee have to really put this game away before SBCC comes alive? I think two items. Once two. once the once Malzahar and Varus get two items, I think then it's much harder for them to win. I mean, obviously Ezreal's a mid-game monster as well. Yes. Right? So um, there's still it's, there's no point where really they're kind of completely shut out. But I think Malzahar just really hard outscales um, the mid lane matchup into the Aatrox. I think the Aatrox in these late game team fights is just going to get kited a little bit too hard. Uh, and of course, Zin Zhao as well falls off versus the Kane later. So That's it's just going to depend. And now we have finally made it on to the Rift. This is week eight of the Queensland High School League of Legends Championship Series. SPCC Colors on the blue side taking on Craigslee on the red. And right away, we're seeing a group of five from Craigslee. They're going to be looking to invade. And right now, JFK's AFK has to be a little bit cautious. He does see the group moving and will back away. Got that ward. He would have been spotted right now by Summer. And because of which, it actually appears as if Craigslee is going to back away. Well, this is a very um, aggressive invade and it's very risky because this tells um, blue team the information that they're all bought. So what I would have liked to see is for top lane for Malzahar to move into the red side to get some vision down off the top red side jungle. With that information, you can really tell how um, quickly the Xin Zhao is um, clearing his jungle and which parting he's taking. So what I would really like to see was Malzahar placing a brush right above Raptors right there. And yeah. you can really just tell your mid lane and top lane to play really safe because you really want to be careful of the Xin Zhao level 2, level 3 gank. I'm not sure they saw everyone because I do agree, the moment you see the entirety of the team on the bot side of the map, you should hard invade the top side, get those deep wardens, get that vision. But I believe only Summer was spotted, so they may have felt it too risky. That said right now, there is a deep ward placed by Craig's Lee, as well as laners are starting to clash. Actually, a little bit of a misstep from Hey, I'm yellow. He's not going to be getting to lane. He's, he looks as if he's starting to get blue buff for himself. I don't know. I think, is he just I think he's just walking with He's, he no, was he kind of walking around the blue buff. <laughs> when we see a camera on Ugo, was, I don't know, he didn't take it because the blue buff's still yeah, up on any map. Yeah, it's still there. I, I'm kind of I curious what that path thing was. F, uh, oh, lag, just any lag, minions, simple. So it's all good. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I mean, I think early on, I mean, they, yeah, definitely Malzahar should have moved in and got a ward on the red buff. I don't know why Aatrox watered his own raptors. Um, I feel like um, that was uh, in kind of respondents to expecting yeah, the ward yeah, coming out of the blue side, but they never did it. But it's still a safe ward for Zin Zhao. And overall, we're just, you know, just yep. a casual laning phase until Xin Zhao gets double buffs, I reckon. Yeah, I mean, this bot lane especially is going to be very volatile early. If whichever support can get it, oh, you see a little bit of a fight in the mid lane. Not much to come up with, though. Now it's going to chill out. But I think whichever support out of these two gets um, a good engage is gonna really going to depend that you're going to win these 2v2s. They're super volatile between the Nautilus and the Galio, of course. Oh, here we go. It's actually a fight for blue buff right this now with AD nice Carry is going after Hay and Black. It does appear as if Hay and Black was looking to concede that blue buff, but now he's trying to re-engage. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, Give Me Vlad is kind of getting poked back by Hay and Purple, but the action is down here because Hay and Yellow has rotated down. It's a flash defensively from AD Carry, and with help of OGG, should be able to walk away safely, but no blue buff was secured. I don't really like that pathing from Xin Zhao. This is one of the things you want to do when you're playing this early game into a late game jungle matchup. You really want to path into the enemy jungler. You want to know where he's going to be and you want to fight him in the jungle like that. Since you know you win the 1v1 super hard and there's nothing Kane can do into this Zin, I really like the smart day out of SMLZ to go for an invade and then look to punish this Kane early. Well, Shinjo went for a really interesting invade right there because um, first of all, he's actually at a disadvantage right now because he has blue buff while um, Kane mm -hmm. has red buff. But however, I did look at mid lane. Um, Aatrox has shoved in um, mm -hmm. a Malzahar to get that priority, so allowing Shinjo to make the invade. And as we can see, both top lane rotated, but um, Urgot Mundo right now is not really a clear winner. So Shinjo made the right call, stole the blue buff away, and now Shinjo, um, Kane, usually early game, runs into a bit of mana issue. So we'll set him back a little bit while Shinjo gets bone experience and gold. 
as both junglers are actually opting to sort of trade uh, scuttlebugs. Let's take a look at the minimap at that situation. I'm a little worried for SPCC's bot lane at the moment. It could be very easy for AD carry to roam down. JFK is AFK kind of sussing it out right now. Not mm. going to connect with the anchor right there. So no drama just yet in the bot side. That was unfortunate. If that hit the wall, you would have gone straight in, and I think the guy there could have turned. So he's lucky it didn't hit the, uh, the wall then, Nautilus. It is, but it, it doesn't seem like as if AD carry is actually slowing up at all. The play is going to be in mid lane right now. Hand purple is the target. Oh. Pulled back in. It forces out the flash, but a follow up from Give Me Flat. Under the tower we go, and first blood going to Craig's Lee. That's rather unfortunate from Malzahar getting caught up a little bit too far pushed up in that lane. Uh, the flash was not oh, enough. Oh, JFK's AFK is actually getting aggressive. Lay at the top, forces out the flash out of Summer, but a follow up from JFK's AFK as well as Kung Fu. They're turning this back around. JFK's in a bit of trouble, but Summer is too low. Kung Fu has to 1v2 in this situation, but oh. Nightwash does not have the damage. Down goes JFK's AFK, and Nightwash is on the run right now. You can see heal was used as well as it's both summoners way. from JFK's AFK. It's a great little play from the Ezreal there, obviously. Galio burnt all his cooldowns and was just stuck too far in and couldn't get out without that flash without the E. And just gets instantly poked down by the Ezreal. Really nice no from Ezreal to know that he can stay there and fight. And the Varus just simply turning focus onto the Nautilus when he's able to free file on the sport. He has to be a little bit careful here. No mana right now on Kung Fu. However, with uh, Hey I'm Black actually recalling, they are quite safe. And Kung Fu should just be able to farm very safely at this stage. Well, this goes back to what I was saying before, how mid lane Aatrox with Xin Zhao will be the um, early game king right now. So Malzahar did not respect the Xin Zhao coming in from behind and gave away the first blood. And while getting first blood, it was good that um, SPCC decided to retaliate by going in on the bot side blue. But however, Galio a bit, a bit too much for he can chew and flash in with no cooldowns and then just gets counter engaged on under tower. Yeah, exactly. Malzaha again, one of those champions you very early on, you're kind of useless until you kind of get your lost chapter. And you just want to play it safe, play for that 10 CSPM and hopefully not die to his early game. So it's a big loss for him, puts him back quite a bit. Had to burn the teleport. Oh, he didn't burn the teleport. Yeah, I'm yeah. actually a bit surprised how behind Hay and Purple is right now in terms of the CS. Normally as a Malzahar, you'd think you'd be able to still farm safely just with the uh, E as well as the W in this situation. So it's I have to give yeah. credit to give me Vlad in order to be completely shutting down Purple at this stage. I feel like uh, Malzahar has missed playing a little bit with his E yeah. and auto attack timings right now. <laughs> and also the dove, Malzahar had a really good point where uh, Malzahar had, had some minions built up which all died to the tower. So currently he's being set back behind just hoping to catch up. But I would like to see Shinja repeating to gank mid because he knows he has no flash. Malza has no flash, and with a champion like Aatrox, they should be just repeatedly ganking this lane. Well, give me Vlad is saying, I might not actually need AD carry right now, as he just is continuing to harass Hay and Purple underneath that tower and free farm to his heart's content. If something isn't done in this mid lane in the near future, we could be seeing a serious snowball on our hands in favor of give me Vlad and Craigslee. Yeah, I mean, as a, as a what, 43 game Malzahar this season with a 70% <laughs> win, I can verify that this is. I mean, it's definitely difficult to play this matchup early as Mouse, but I think the biggest thing that Hay on Purple's, um, you know, not executing correctly is he's spamming his Q way too much. The way you want to play it is you just want to pretty much just save all your cooldowns. You don't want to trade at all with the Aatrox, you want to just stay away. And every time the wave comes into your tower, you just EW or just play your W to kind of store the mini wave. And you just want to create a freeze or at least a slow push in your favor so you can build up a big mini wave so you can't get punished as hard with trades. Uh, another thing I would like to, um, the Aatrox, even though getting the first blood, decided not to go Lethality to push his advantages yeah. <laughs> further. Really? He decided to opt for the Glad Cleaver, especially the Kindle Gem first mm. item, which I feel like he should have grabbed um, Longsword, at least, or uh, Longsword, or another Doran's yeah. Phage. But just the Kindle Gem just seems a bit off right now, considering how far ahead he is. Yeah, I think Yomi's Rush would have, or well, not Yomi's Rush, but you know, at least getting the Serrated Dirk would have put him much further ahead, whether this Malzahar. I mean, I would like the Malzahar as well, I like he's gone for Cloth Armor. Knows he's kind of under the pump here and hopefully he can... Ooh, a Ooh. bit of an engage right now. Coming out of Summer, I don't feel as if there's going to be enough damage to warrant a kill just yet, however. Still, I'm liking the aggression coming out of Craigslee. Yeah, it's really nice aggression there. Obviously, trying to look for a, a, a play there on the bot side. Unfortunately, uh, blue team a little bit too close to the tower, so they couldn't really get anything going, but... At least there's still ambition and thought here, trying to yep. get something in. It gives them pressure that allows the red team to pick up the Cloud Dragon here. Yeah, so first Dragon going in favor of Craig's Lee, which kind of, at the moment, it feels as if everything is going Craig's Lee right now. As we're watching, more poke damage going down to JFK as AFK. Kung Fu really taking advantage of this lane matchup. There is one good thing going in SPC colors right now, and that would be in the top lane. Urgot, for the most part, is doing what we expected. Hey, I'm Yellow does have a small CS lead over OGG. I'd like to maybe try and get this Urgot further ahead, because right now, SPCC needs something to rally around. 
I mean, it is very difficult to get Ogre ahead in that matchup, though, but since the just Mundo is really hard to kill early on, or just in general, especially now he's got his ultimate available. Oh, that damage out of Nightwatch actually kind of almost out of nowhere. Kung Fu has to be careful. Another shot like that, and that would be a very dead Ezreal. Yeah, I mean, I think the I mean, Ezra, uh, sorry, Varus is really, really strong with his own WE. Oh, I said Israel, but uh, yeah, no, the a bunch of poke that comes down, especially when you have stacks of the passive, you've seen maybe Kane trying to get yeah. Oh, got ahead just as you mentioned. This is a little bit of a two v one situation right now. OGG could be in trouble, but AD Carry is on the way. Kane's using his ultimate, and under the tower he goes. The under counter engage from AD Carry does result in Hayam Black's death, and now Hayam Yellow is all on his own, getting run down by a double buff AD Carry as well as OGG with those cleavers. It won't be long now. A double kill for AD Carry. Yeah, SMLZ there, great counter gank, obviously. I mean, I think that was a bit of poor execution there from Hayao Black. He should have known that the Zinza would have been topside around this timing. His red buff just came up. Uh, and also, you know, obviously, you should know that the timing's matched because your blue was about to come up, which is when, obviously, the Zinza came to invade. So you knew he was on that side of the map. And you know he's just stronger than you right now. So as a result, Mundo, of course, ultimate available as well, which just makes it so hard to kill. Uh, and unfortunately, he's going to get punished here with a great invade here as well from SMLZ. I definitely feel like there was a bit of a miscommunication between um, Kane and Ergo right there. Because um, it looked like Ergo did not want to commit while mm. Kane went full commitment. If I see both, um, both players commit completely, I could have seen an E flash to cancel the animation onto the Mundo and into a full combo of Ergo. That would have yeah. put um, Mundo right down the uh, uh, ulti execution bar, which could have resulted into a 2v1 against Ninja, which could have turned it around. But I think um, just a bit of a... Um, uh, communication error right there leading mm. to the double kill against them. Yeah, miscommunication and mis-execution there from uh, SPCC Colors. What has me worried about all that was that it comes right after I was bringing up the fact that, hey, at least top lane isn't going that badly yet for <laughs> SPCC. And then immediately two kills over on the top side of the map right now. SPCC really on the back foot. It's not too surprising considering these team compositions, but they have to do something to quell this bleeding at this stage. Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest credit here for Craig's is the Zinzao has been in the right place at the right time, and he's been getting the lanes ahead where he needs to. Obviously, bot lane is uh, kind of naturally found the lead just because you know it was a very volatile two v two, as I kind of mentioned at the start of the game. Um, you know, if the Nautilus can save his cooldowns before the Galio before they get like a big chunk or a kill, um, it's going to be very hard for the enemy team to win. But the Zinzao, of course, as uh, George said earlier, is if he can get into these lanes early, and you know the Aatrox Zinza combination, especially in the mid lane is really king and depending who will win this early game. Take a look at the minimap right now. It looks to be as if Craigslee is putting a lot of attention onto this bot lane. So abilities being used from SPCC not really connecting. I don't think they still will commit for that dive. I'll be really curious to see what happens when the waves crash. I mean, it has been spotted with the ward. Gimme Vlad is able to clear it, so that should potentially stop this dive. Not out of the woods yet, though. AD Carry is sitting on a ward, however, as JFK AFK sort of gives away the fact that they know he is there. This is going to force Craig's Lee's hand either to attack or retreat, and it looks like the option is retreat for now. Yeah, I mean, SPCC are just kind of going to sit back, wait, try not to die anymore, try not to, you know, die to the Zinzao ganks oh. or in this mid lane either, and just wait to get their, you know, two to three items and then finally take these 5v5 team fights where they can win. Um, if they can execute it. AD the Carry is actually right? going in quite aggressive against the enemy jungle right there. Meanwhile, JFK is AFK is trying to make something happen. The true shot barrage not doing that much damage. So nothing again, sort of a bit of a nothing burger as both the tanky supports are doing a good job at absorbing a lot of this damage in the bot lane. Well, this bot lane um, 2v2 right now is all reliant on Aftershock, I believe. It just depends on wh which support has Aftershock up and which doesn't have. And the support that does not have Aftershock will just get instantly melted. But right there, we see both Galio and Nautilus burning Aftershock. So we won't, we could be seeing an uh, engage on two both supports in a bit of a fight, but it looks like they decided to back off for now. As Dragon could be spawning, I believe. Dragon. Yeah, I think Dragon's up in about 30 seconds or so. Um, I mean, I maybe, like, obviously I have the Aatrox and Zinza down here. I thought they might have gone for a dive or look for a play on the turret, but Minion Wave not in position, yeah. effectively enough. AD Carry oh, spent a lot of time on the bot half of the map just now, and unfortunately mm. he wasn't able to get a kill, but what he was able to do was really force Hey, I'm Black into, like, unfavorable situations. Like, Black's farm was getting nullified just as much as AD Carry's was throughout all of that, and when you take a look at the vision, it's actually AD Carry now who has, you know, a lot more deep vision control. You see that very, very deep vision ward right there next to the red buff of the blue side. So it is still a small net game for Craig's mm. Lee, although it is unfortunate that they couldn't actually successfully pull off that tower dive. Um, I'm noticing an interesting itemization choice coming out of Mundo right now. 
We see a pretty uh, heavy AD team comp coming out of SPCC, but he opted for the Spirit Visage first item. Yeah. I feel like Urgot should be taking more advantage of that and fighting him more often, especially because he knew that Xin was bot lane for the last maybe two to three minutes. I feel like this should have been definitely a solo kill uh, opportunity right there. I almost wonder as if like he just recognized that situation too late and that's why he's sitting on two cloth armors. And we're seeing Hay and Black is able to steal the red buff, but could be in a bit of trouble as Gimme Vlad is trying to hunt him down right now. Fortunately, OGG is pinned under the tower, so he won't be able to get some top lane assistance. Hay and Black should be able to walk over the wall and get away. A good little successful steal for the jungler from SBCC. Yeah, cheeky little made from Kane, obviously knowing Zim was on the bot side, almost got caught out and punished by the Aatrox, he's a little bit slow. Uh, I think he kind of cleared, did he? I'm pretty sure he cleared his own side of the jungle before going for invade. Generally when you see the enemy jungle on the inside of map in your own solo games, instantly just run for the jungle if you've got priority. So, or even not. Well, so, right now we're not seeing any um, usage of teleport coming oh, out from the Malzahar yeah, at yeah. all. And I do see a ward a that's in the brush yeah, right now. Aatrox just teleported ward. and they're looking for this tower dive right now. Depth charge connecting on the hang black forces the use of the stopwatch and actually JFK is, AFK is able to bring down the Nautilus, which means he is just kind of on his own in a 2v1 situation. Tower doing damage, but in the end, Gimme Vlad is able to get that kill, which means his passive will proc on the ultimate. In the end, it is a two for one in favor of Craig's lead. Yeah, it's super huge for Craig's lead. This is a big lead, especially in the bot lane against that Ezreal, where you know he's going to really carry these mid-game team fights. And as long as this Aatrox is ahead of this Malzahar and items, he'll be winning these uh, mid-game fights where the Aatrox really gets strong. Obviously, finish his Black Cleaver now as well means Malzahar is going to have to wait even longer to catch up to this uh, Aatrox in the mid lane. Yeah, interesting right there as well. Just like I said, Hayam Purple, he has teleport. He should have helped. Mm. He could have teleported to the tower and could have turned that around into a triple kill for SPCC. Yeah. But we saw nothing, no rotations, no response coming out of him. He just decided to opt to farm mid lane, apparently. Mm. What I find interesting is taking a look at where Give Me Vlad was when he used that teleport. He did that purely under the suspicion that there would be a ward guarding the entrance at the river. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, there wasn't one. So that teleport was almost wasted just because they didn't have enough map. Knowledge. Still, it was effective in getting behind SBCC Colors bot side, so it was successful, but I guess not the most optimal. Give me Vlad is actually in a bit of trouble right now. Caught in 2v1 situation. The ultimate from Hay and Purple is going to come down. That is a lot of damage right now, and Vlad is quite low. Shut down going over to Hay and Black. Yeah, I mean, that's a classic Malzahar gank. You just see, he walks up, presses R on you, the jungle hits you a couple times, and then you go down uh, almost immediately. I mean, he should have known Zinza was kind of, oh, Kane was in the area, I suppose, tracking him, but. Um, I don't think he showed on the control ward that uh, SMLZ put in before, so I mean, it's just unlucky gank. Well, that, that's what we see, it's called the Kame form um, power shift right yeah. there. Um, just straight up, uh, you know, with the W knockup chain together with the Malzahar CC and taking care advantage of that Aatrox has no ulti as he used it to dive bot. You know, a clean kill coming out of SPCC and a pretty good comeback in terms of for the Kame. We could be seeing um, a bit more retaliation now. Yeah, I mean, definitely since he got that cane for information, he starts getting a little bit stronger, especially since he's gone for Ross as well, he's got a lot more sustainability in these fights. We may see something here in this top 2v2. Yeah, we might, as OGG and Hayam Yellow are actually going quite at it. Hayam Yellow trying to get the most out of his poke as possible. That said, those cleavers are doing so much work against Hayam Yellow that OGG comes out healthier at the end of the exchange. Minus that little thing we just saw top lane though, I do have to give credit to SPCC. They had a pretty rough first 10 minutes of the game, but since then they've done a good job in sort of slowing this game down and getting it back under control. They're no longer bleeding kills like they were at first. Lanes are getting a bit more even at this age. I feel like SPCC could still mount a comeback here. Uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, they can definitely still make a comeback just because their comp is much better in the later game. I think the, one of the reasons why they're slowing down the game is not so much them doing it. It's more crazy. He's not pushing their advantage as much. Especially Aatrox going for Cleaver, as George highlighted. If he went for Lethality, it means he could have push, pushed the lead against the Malzahar much more effectively. He hasn't really got any uh, kills besides that first one, the first blood you saw in the mid lane, which is exactly what you don't want as an Aatrox into this Malzahar. And we're also looking at maybe possible tier map purchase for the Aatrox, which is also maybe not the most optimal item no. at this stage, especially when Aatrox has so much um, AOE and wave clear already built into his Oh kit. my gosh, that was actually an ultimate used by Nightwatch. So he's trying to get as much down onto Kung Fu Monk as possible, but the return True Shot Barrage actually turns the fight in Craigslist's favor. They might be looking to tower dive because there are low health bars. That said, Flash is still available on Nightwatch. Uh, it, uh, Kung Fu Monk is able to get that burst down though. It, this is a sketchy situation. I don't think SBCC colors really want that, except for the fact that Hayam Black <laughs> is coming down. Here comes the taunt attempt. It does not connect because of Flash. W. Teleport coming through. That will be Hayam Yellow trying to find a way in. In the end, no one will go down. Teleport a little bit too late. 
<laughs> or, Unfortunately, I got ultimate swings wide and nothing will come with that kill. It was a good ambition, good play there from... Uh-oh, uh, give me Vlad. Actually, yeah. might oh. be getting caught out. Ultimate used by Malzahar, and Black is there to help turn this around. Vlad will go down. It's a first kill for him in purple in this game, but the third one for the SPCC colors. Yeah, I mean, SPCC colors got a huge way back into the game there. Obviously, getting a kill on Vlad and all those failed cooldowns as well from Kung Fu. Jeff Case FK walking up with absolutely no HP. Unfortunately, Kung Fu missed the W, which would have secured the kill for him. Um, but once again, the Galio just survives and, you know, turns that entire play around. Uh, we're seeing just general um, kind of uh, mispositioning by the Aatrox. He tried to rotate bot uh, to help out the uh, counter gank or engage, but he walked towards the blue side jungle as his rotation where he could have walked through river very yeah. safely. And he saw the cane but decided to go on the engage onto the Malzahar over the wall. He is not that strong yet and remember Aatrox ulti does not um, give you the revive if you don't kill an enemy. And as a result of all of that, SBCC Colors is able to stop Craigslee from getting their third Cloud Drake. So in the end, it's been three Cloud Drakes so far this game. Finally, we're going to be seeing something different. Two Cloud Drakes to Craigslee, one to SBCC Colors. A again, it's just more going to the fact that SBCC seem to be starting to pull it back. Maybe not necessarily through their own play, but through missteps coming out of Craigslee. Yeah, and it's definitely going to be interesting to see how they turn into the mid-game. I mean, this Ezreal in particular is going to start getting stronger and stronger. Obviously, you're going to get his Mana Moon stacking up. He's got his Ice Mall Gauntlet able to ready, which means um, you know, this Varus is going to be doing a lot more damage. I think he's I still... Uh, sorry, Mundo in the top lane looks like he's going for Warmogs next as well. He's got no armor besides that one cloth and the uh, Ninja Tabby as well, but that doesn't really help much against Ogon Varus. And right there, we also saw a very um, questionable usage of the Rift Herald mm, Shelly yeah. down in the mid lane. Um, well, right now, uh, Craigslee could be looking for the first tower bot lane. Uh, one smack of um, Shelly would have just finished that tower. But instead, they wasted it mid, and um, the tower is still at a reasonably healthy HP right now. So I would have liked to see um, Jin Zhao go bot, drop the Herald, and then get the first blood goal, Ooh. freeing the bot lane. Gank happening in the top. OGG forced to use Splash oh. to try and get away from Hay and Black. It's going to be successful for now in the sense that OGG won't go down, but that's a critical summoner use. Looking at the minimap, AD carry is on his way up there right now, and Hay and Black is on the retreat. I don't think he's going to find an opening just because Hay I'm Yellow still has Flash available. It would be a riskier gank. That said, AD Carry is positioning for it. He's waiting in that bush, faking out that recall. I, they're not going to commit. He's too far under tower at this stage. Yeah, I mean, the Mundo as well pops the ultimate there uh, in that little engage, got back to full health, and then, you know, that's classic Mundo things. <laughs> I, I would have really liked to see the Rift Herald play bot lane, freeing yeah. the Ezreal yep. and Nautilus to go mid and top. And since Nautilus being such an um, aggressive and like uh, CC heavy support, he could have... Oh, oh, here we go. Depth Charge going in as well as the ultimate. They're going to zone Nightwatch out the thing, but Kung Fu Monk was just destroyed by Hay and Black on the backside of that. A little much too much dive commit, flashing over the wall. This is a big no-no for Summoner, and he is going to go down. Summer getting killed in the end by Hay and Purple. His second kill of the game. I mean, it's a great pick, uh, great double kill that picked up for SBC. It was obviously crazy greeting too hard for that bot lane tower, but very questionable flash from JFK as AFK, especially because on Gally, you really need that flash taunt in those big team fights. I think um, miscommunication between him and Malzahar there. Malzahar obviously had ulti and you know, didn't really need the Gally to flash over the wall. You could have just locked him down, let the cane come and finish him off. Well, right there we're seeing Craigslee getting a bit too much for their play. Getting the first tower wasn't enough. They could have just freely rotated it, not greeted it, and rotated it top to push Ooh. their advantage. Hey, and Black once again going after OGG, who's immediately going to pop the ultimate and sort of stop this gank before it happens. Hey, and Black is starting to really make himself known all across the map. As you can see, he's opted for the red cane in this instance, and they might be considering a tower dive. That said, they also might come right down here where AD Carry is going after JFK's AFK, unable to get any significant damage down onto that Galio. As giving Vlad is starting to work these side lanes. Nightwatch is on his own against a very fed Aatrox right now. He has to be careful. That damage is huge. The flash forward is there. One more auto should do it, but the tower is doing so much work. Kimmy Vlad gets the kill before he goes down himself. The passive will keep him alive. In mid lane, hand, Purple's in trouble as well. The Ignite will secure the kill for Summer as a very, very late <laughs> Galio arrives to the scene. Gimme Vlad has opted to go into the jungle. It's running straight into Hay and Black right now. They're still fighting in the mid lane. It's JFK. It's AFK is going after Kung Fu Monk, but it's a 2v1. He should go down. Kung Fu Monk securing that kill as Hay, I'm like, give me Vlad. Goes down to hey, I'm black in the jungle action all over the map all of a sudden. I had a chaos everywhere and it goes at three for one in favor of Craigsley. Getting uh, the entire bot side killed and of course a kill in the mid lane as well. Just huge misplays from both teams, I suppose. I mean, outplay in terms of the Aatrox and his ultimate revive and then backs in the bush greedily and gets caught out. Very unfortunate there for both sides, but 
Overall, uh, SPCC coming ahead in the trade. I mean, sorry, Craigslist coming ahead in the trade. Uh, Varus getting caught out by the uh -oh, Death Bush. Death Bush, sorry to cut you off, but hey, I'm Black just walked right into Craigslist's trap right there. That kill is going to be going over to AD carry, his third of the game, and this could mean Baron. Oh, I mean, this is a very ambitious bat. I guess, I guess actually, no, it's fine. Uh, Dingo is the uh, jungle is dead. Uh, a little bit out of position. 5v4, uh, but they're taking this down very slowly. Of course, Israel's not running on those high DPS champions. Uh, Aatrox oh. as well doesn't do much. Aeon Purple's walking right in there. Actually, gets the silence on everyone. Oh, no, JFK's no, no, no. AMK gets a three man talk. We are seeing a crazy. Crazy Baron fight right now, and Ham Yellow gets first blood within it. It actually looks to be going SPC's color way as two members of Craig's lead go down. The backline has no health. That's going to be an ace, a clean white for SPCC colors, and they're going to get that Baron to boot. Yeah, the Baron there from uh, Crazy was a bit uh, greedy, a bit over the top, you know, obviously. That's exactly the fight that um, <laughs> SBCC Colors want to take. It's that perfect front to back. It lets Malzahar and uh, Varus just sit back, use their cooldowns and free fire with their lockdown. Let's Gary get a massive taunt as well because you cannot simply get out of that pit and the entirety of Craigslist falls down. This is hugely now for SBCC Colors. Now, George, before this game started and like before our interviews, we were sort of talking about like how you were training and preparing for you know these barren situations and what you have to do. How would your coach rate that sort of setup right there? That was probably a terrible Baron call because um, although the idea was good that Kane was dead, but you have to remember they're um, low on health. They do have five, but they have no percentage damage onto Baron. They have no Mountain Drake. So what it should have done was instantly come off and turn around and then take the fight to them instead of getting engaged on. Because you know, in a Baron pit in closed areas with Malzahar full of AOE, and uh, we have Varus with his AOE lockdown with ult. We have um, uh, Galio taunt, which is also AOE, especially in Baron pit, he can taunt everyone. And then we have um, also pretty much, it's pretty much all AOE across the board. Yeah, definitely. Or SPC, so so was it from beyond death, yeah. the Ergot is looking yeah. at AOE fear. Uh, yeah, the AoE Fear, the AoE Taunt, uh, Hey and Purple drops his ultimate. That's a huge like damage pool right in the middle of that Baron Pit. It just went all SPCC Colors' favor, and it all started actually with Hey and Purple's initiate, just silencing the entirety of Craig's lead. So even if they wanted to snap react, they were sort of unable to, and that just allowed SPC to just swarm in and take everyone out. A huge fight going SPCC's way. And at this stage, what can Craig's lead do to come back? Because they're a team that's supposed to be playing from ahead in this one. Well, we've seen a constant a bit of a throw off their lead right now from Crazy. Uh, we were seeing about 4k gold upwards before the Baron power play, but we can see about a, I think, 6k gold Baron power play coming from um, SBCC, and they're definitely evening out the game. And remember what we said about before, um, SBC, uh, Crazy is on a timer right now, and the timer has just took past 25 minutes, and two items on both teams. I believe we're going to start seeing FCCC to take more of team fights instead of getting caught, and with these 5v5, they should definitely have the advantage. I mean, I think I'm mean, interested to see Malzahar going for Zonyu's second item. I think, obviously, he's getting dumpstered in lane a little bit, but I think uh, at this point it'd be much more effective for him to instantly get that uh, Morello's or the uh, Tank Shred, of course, to deal with the Mundo. I think because Mundo right now, once he gets these two items, is very strong, and especially against the Malzahar, has that Spirit Visage, is going to be very difficult to kill. Well, you do have the Avarice Blade, I believe, <laughs> yeah, that is on, on, on from Nightwatch. Oh, so yeah, there yeah, is yeah, some yeah. Grievous Wounds coming out there, but I do agree. I would like to see the Morellos, just sort of as a fail-safe, if nothing else, to well, take Well, I mean, care. also the um, Leandro's Torment as well from mm -hmm. uh, Malzahar. All, um, of course, gets the, uh, what's the item you build every game? I'm a Malzahar man, I don't know. Rylai's Christmas. Rylai's, yeah. <laughs> I mean, Aurelian Soul and Malzahar man, it's like a cool item on both the champions. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, Rylai's as well on uh, Malzahar. Once he gets his item, he's pretty much, his 1v1 is really strong if you know what you're doing and you can kite correctly because you just throw down the E and then you just walk away and they can't do anything. As at this stage right now, we're starting to see those deeper wards getting placed by SPCC Colors right now. They're playing a lot more up front in Craigslist's face. Obviously, that was helped with the Baron. They were allowed to really get those waves pushing. With this line of scrimmage pushed into Craigslist territory right now, I'm curious to see where they're going to try to make the pick and on who. What sort of team comp they're going to throw out there? Are they going to go five man down the middle? Are they going to go four one split push? What do you guys feel will be most optimal in this situation? I think SBCC just want to group up as five, and I mean, Craigsley kind of want to do the same. Like, both these comps aren't really built to have any other win condition except 5v5s. I just think SBCC have a better front to back and yeah. more uh, key engage tools. I just don't think Aatrox or Mundo is uh, able to function in a side lane versus the uh, Malzahar and the Ergo at this point, respectively. I would definitely like to see the Urgot moving to a side lane, pushing yeah. with Baron buff with four people grouped mid. And Urgot does have the option to teleport into the fight to support mm. and back up. <laughs> and we definitely should be seeing a pretty safe um, four-man push for um, SBCC with Galio for you know tank engage and Malzahar with lockdown. And uh, it should be just 
but I'm not seeing the Baron utilization right now. They haven't yeah. taken a single tower with that Baron. They've never pushed together, not grouped together with the Baron. So they're kind of wasting. So Quakesley right now, you could say they did a very good job stalling the, out the Baron buff and looking to fight again while everyone's on even ground. And we do see that Baron has ran out now. Yeah, I mean, I think it's more so poor execution from SPCC than uh, Craigsley playing well. I mean, not so much poor execution, but it's just... I think the fact that it was also they stole it and Craigsley were kind of pushing their head lead mm -hmm. as well. It was more of those barons that allowed oh, the Nightwatch is in a lot high. of trouble. Deathline connecting, but no real follow-up. It's yeah. still just Summer on his own. He's doing a good job taking Here comes the flank from AD Carey. He's trying to get to that back line. I'm sorry, that was give me Vlad who got back there. He gets the shutdown down onto Nightwatch with oh, the AK man. here. Down, this could be Craigsley's fight. They're still trying to rush down that back line. Give me Purple has no health and is rushed down by AD Carey as the Fury on Death actually picks up a kill on the Kung Fu Monk. In the end, health bars are still too low at the moment for Craig's lead to really sustain this fight and SBCC coach can turn it around. Hey, and Black is the one who's doing the damage. He takes down AD Carry and Summer has to run for his life. He will not get away from this one as Hey, I'm Yellow gets the last kill of that fight going in favor of SBCC colors. I mean, that was a very interesting team fight. I mean, you can just see SBC colors now that their comp is just built so much better for these team fights. They have so much more uh, utility in these fights because even though, uh, you know, uh, Crazy got exactly what they wanted. They were got isolated on the Varus. Great job from Varus to kite out for so long. They were able to isolate Varus and Malzahar get him killed very early in the fight before they could get their key cooldowns off. Malzahar still has his ultimate available, still has stopwatch available as well. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think they can end here. No, no I don't think they, they can end, but they can definitely, definitely get this end. in hit. Yeah, Kung Fu sure. has come back up right now. The thing is, those cleavers actually supply a pretty heavy slow. Mm. If OTG could have tried to possibly delay those backs, instead he's just going to opt to clear the farm. Probably the safer option, but with an exposed inhib in the middle, Baron up right about now. I'd like to see SBCC start setting up for some of these more major neutral objectives and possibly look to close the game. Yeah, I mean, and going back to that fire round, uh, sorry, going back to uh, directly to that team fight that just happened, I think. Craigsy just, yeah, they burnt all their cooldowns and all their abilities trying to kill uh, the Varus and the Sweat and the Malzahar. Well, the Ogre got a perfect ultimate in the middle of the fight. Meanwhile, Craig's lead just walking straight to that Mountain Drake, and they're going to pick it up. No problem. There was no vision by SBCC, no one in the area, and despite losing a team fight in and in him, Craig's lead gets a neutral objective. Yeah, I definitely think Hey, on Black and Yellow should appeal just straight back to that uh, Mountain Drake. It's a pretty free objective, and Mountain Drake, especially for this Craigsley team comp, is absolutely huge. It actually allows them to actually do the Baron now, um, because... <laughs> Oh, sorry, it gives uh, Ezreal and Aatrox, you know, a little bit more extra damage on this Baron. Um, and I think, you know, uh, of course, SBCC's comp is just so much better at this Baron. So I think Crazy want to look for a pick and try to take someone down, or maybe bait SBCC into stunning it up and then try to take a turn fight while they have the Baron reduction on them. This, uh, this Mountain Dragon for Craigsley is huge for their Baron taking potential. Because before we saw that they had no damage to kill the Baron quickly, but now with the high base damage coming out of uh, Mundo Q, Ezreal WQ, well, we can see them taking a very fast Baron if the team fight ever goes south for SPCC. That said, they still have to wrestle control of the map before they can be looking to mm -hmm. actually start on this Baron. And as we're seeing right now, SPCC is not willing to give that to him, clearing out all the vision that Craigsley got for free in that sort of surprise situation. I also noticed that they were sending four people to clear that vision just because Give Me Vlad was forced to go back and deal with super minions in the base. I'm actually surprised SPCC was quiet for that long. Like, they didn't make their presence known on the map anywhere following that inhib going down. Yeah, I mean, especially because all their waves are in good positions as well. Uh, both top and bot are, are slow pushing into uh, crazy and it sort of gives them a perfect opportunity when someone has to go answer that bot wave uh, for them to come and uh, counter and, and just start up the Baron, force out a TP and then just repeat. Get a slow push back in the bot lane and just do the same thing again. Very simple macro and allows them to do it, but they are standing on Baron now. Yeah, Baron has been started right now. Nightwatch is making his way there. So if Craigsley could somehow rush it, they have a brief window for 5v4, but that will not be the case. Baron already down at half right now, and it will be Summer looking to lead the charge. He has the vision on it, and Teleport is coming through. They're going to attempt to steal right now, but they may be too little late. True Shop Rush does not do enough damage, and the Baron will go in favor to SBCC. The ensuing fight, however, is going to be started with a heroic entrance coming from this Galio. AD Carry has nowhere to go, and he will be the first one to fall. Falling to AM Purple. Meanwhile, on the other side as well, an ultimate was dropped on the server. He will be the next to go, and SPC has taken down two members of Craig's Lee and what more? It's actually three down, and the fourth will be oh, OGG. The last member, Kong Fu Monk, has to try and 1v5 to save this game from ending, but I do not see him being able to get away from Hey, I'm Black. One more ability will do it. There is your ace, and there is your game. SPCC will maintain on top of the ladder. Yeah, and SBC are getting a nice 5 for 0 ace there. Very clear. Get the Baron picked up as well. And you're going to run straight through this mid lane with supers on the Nexus, and that should be all she wrote. 
I think in that last fight, it was just calm. Uh, Craig Lee just kind of didn't get there, didn't pull the trigger fast enough. And the SBCC comp just burns that barrier down so much more quickly and is so much better at these team fights. A lot of self peel, uh, a lot of ability to shred, and of course, uh, Varus as well with the Grievous wins absolutely negated the Mundo advantage in the top lane. It was just the stronger team fight comp. Yeah. It was good to see that um, SBC did go for the ward coverage and the mm -hmm. ward killings and clearing the jungle, getting the vision away from Craigslee, leading up to the ban play and ending the game. So great vision control coming out from them. A very clean finish as well from SBCC, just able to quickly know that, okay, we can take Baron in this window, we win the fight afterwards, they did everything correctly and, you know, just quickly execute and finish the game off in one quick play. Yeah, I think the only criticism I can really throw from SPCC following the 15 minute mark, obviously before 15 minutes it was a rough going for them, yeah. but following 15 minute marks, yeah, they were playing their objectives correctly, especially that second mirror. And I mean, obviously, they straight win because they had that ace. I still would have liked to see a little bit more aggression from them. I yeah. felt as if they kind of mingled around in their own jungle a little bit too long, yeah. especially when they brought down that first inhib, and as a result, they did lose that uh, Mountain Drake. Mm -hmm. However, when they were put in those situations, they still did execute. They still did close. So you have to give them credit for that. I mean, there's a reason why they're on top of the ladder. So they do know what they're doing. It could just be a little bit cleaner moving forward, especially with hot teams like KG4 chasing them right now. If they want to win this whole tournament, there's still areas they can sort of tweak to improve. Yeah. Still a great win. They're still in first place, though. Yeah, of course, still on top of the table. Only losing last week, of course, to KG4. It's going to be very easy to see those two teams go head to head. Um, we go into playoffs in the mm -hmm. next couple of weeks. I mean, I do still think some of those issues from the very first time I saw SPC is still kind of there. I think one of their biggest weaknesses is, of course, in the mid lane. I think Hay on Purple's lane phase is, um, still leaves a lot to be desired. I think he needs to learn a lot more about how to manage that wave early on. Because I feel like if that Miles or played that lane phase correctly, I think they could have won the game a lot faster and a lot cleaner as well. Uh, which is one of the key areas they can improve on. But besides that, they played well. Obviously, very clean execution, as I've said. Mm -hmm. They took advantage to finish the game off. Uh, and, you know, overall, they drafted a nice comp, they used it effectively. The Kane didn't get put behind too far earlier, yeah. despite the Zinzel's best efforts. So I think, mm -hmm. good game overall from SBCC. Yeah. Uh, I would love to see um, Hey and Purple, more utilization of that teleport. Yeah. To yes. just help, it, help his bot lane. Because there were so many players that crazily made good against their bot lane, with no help coming from the team. So I definitely would have liked to see more teleport coming out to support their bot lane. Making out of that early game a bit cleaner and maybe even ahead. All right, but looking at Craig's Lee now, just a little bit, like what could they have done to improve that game? Because obviously they had a very, very strong start, and it just mm. sort of slipped away. They like started losing these skirmishes. Probably they were pushing a little too deep when they didn't need to, but it still felt they had a chance until yeah. those 5v5 team fights. I mean, Crazy just had a massive throw at the Baron. When they took that pick on the jungle, they went, okay, jungle's dead, let's go to Baron. Which is, you know, a very, I mean, it's good to see they have that kind of ideal they're going, you know, they're, they're having a thought process, right? They can see there's something they're thinking, they're not just AFKing. Um, but, you know, at least they're, um, you know, thinking about what they're doing and, you know, if there's a thought process there, at least you can kind of change the thought process and improve. And I think if they have a coach or, you know, want to get advice, of course, that's very uh, promising, I suppose, mm -hmm. to see versus a team just kind of being uh, brain AFK and just mm -hmm. doing a play because they think it's the right thing. That said, I do believe we have some replays to show you guys so we can further look at some of these team fights that happened. This is that Baron fight that we were just talking about right now. Chrysler got that pick on the jungle. They're looking to bring down this Baron and then SBCC shows up. Yeah, I mean, SPC shows up here, you can see the massive talk from the Galio, the suppression as well, straight onto the Mundo in the middle, getting that percent HP charge. There's just really nothing they can do here, right? They can't get over the Baron wall. They're trapped behind the Baron, which is where the Baron does most of the damage and applies the biggest debuff as well. Then they hand the Baron over after everyone's dead at 2,000. Give uh, SPCC a beautiful Baron with not much else to do. And from there, you know, just see him take control of the map. Slow up, get their items. I think that allowed Malzahar to get his <laughs> yeah. uh, Rylas completed. I think the Varus got the uh, Mortal Reminder after yep, that as well. And did. from that, it means Mundo's almost irrelevant. Uh, it then means, you know, the Zinza has a hard time getting in and engaging on the back line. And, you know, there's not much you can do after that. Yeah. I'd definitely like to see better shot calling or cleaner shot calling coming mm -hmm. from uh, Craigslee because at that Baron, we could see that half of them turned to fight the enemy while half of them continued to DPS the Baron, yeah. which meant that the, AD um, the Ezreal was hitting the Baron instead of the enemy team while his tanks just died and got melted. And especially, uh, there was another team fight, I believe, afterwards where... Um, uh, Aatrox got a good yeah. pick onto the Varus, mm -hmm. but then the shifting uh, team fight, the mm -hmm. focus was a bit off, and each player sort of attacked their d different champions. Yeah. And so that allowed um, Conqueror 
Urgot to just yeah. pop off and yeah. just do a massive AOE damage and then clean up the team fight. So definitely cleaner shot calling and maybe a stronger in-game leader coming out of Crazily would definitely benefit them as a team. Yeah, and you know, obviously a team fight you're talking about just be, oh, we'll do it to these. This is the this is the end of the game. Yeah, yeah this is the end of the game. Yeah, here, this so. is the fight. At the, the TP. End. I think I, I didn't catch on the replay. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, the Urgot the Aatrox TPs in and then instantly jumps over the wall <laughs> and then kind of just waits. And they have Baron now, of course, which gives you massive AP since it's second Baron or AP slash AD. Mm -hmm. I mean, at this point, it's just very difficult to really get on top of the backline because you've got Varus and Malzahar uh, self peeling a little bit, and then you know, them, you can see the grievous wounds and uh, got, uh, sorry, the minor ultimate doing absolutely nothing. I feel as if Kung Fu was so close to taking down some of the people in that team fight, but it just wasn't there. Like the front line, unfortunately, did not stay alive long enough for that damage to really yeah. come down. You saw very low health bars on SBCC. It was very close, but I think a mix of that, like that added buff, I suppose, from the Baron, really mm -hmm. was that deciding factor in that last team fight. And the positioning, I would say, from Craigslist, because we had Aatrox and I forgot who, but uh, two were in the Baron pit, while three were outside the yeah. Baron pit. They were split, they were fighting on two fronts, whereas um, SBCC were grouped up as a team. They could just peel and then call focus for whichever champion they wanted. Yeah. So just a bit, um, I guess, means coming, especially the Aatrox, you know, teleporting and jumping out. And then I think he jumped back in, but yeah. like, just a bit iffy right there. Yeah, I mean, I, I do want to say, Kung Fu played really well in this game. I think yeah. Ezreal was one of the highlights. Um, mm -hmm. Out of the whole crazy performance, I think you know he had some great kills early on in that yes. bot lane to win those 2v2s. I think he played quite smart, made a little bit of a greedy play with the Nautilus when they went for the kill after the turret, but besides that, I can't really fault the Ezreal too much. I think it was just a case of the other team was just too strong and he just couldn't do much. And he, I think he did pilot that Ezreal very well, which is one of the, you know, I'd probably say yeah. one of the, high, the hardest AD carries to play. So I was very impressed by Kung Fu. That said though, if you had to give an MVP on SBCC, who would it go to? Mm, I mean, it's very interesting. It's, I'd probably say that Urgot played really, really well. I yeah. think Heim Yellow uh, yeah. played quite well on top. So I think Heim Black played as well as well. Mm -hmm. And I think the Varus as well, Nightwatch. I remember that from yeah, the very first game. Yeah. He played very well as well. So I think those three players, I'd probably have to give it to the Urgot because um, <laughs> in the, some of those team fights, he got some very crucial highlight plays. Yeah. Even though necessarily it was because uh, Crazy were focusing on the AD carry and the mid laner, he got just free range, right? Yeah. But. Uh, you know, still making those plays, making the right decisions, getting, I think he got a couple of three-man Phoebe on Ness, yes, which he is did. huge for winning those two In the Baron pit as well, exactly, like yeah. in like the critical moment, he did connect with Fear Beyond Death. There was that one miss early yeah. at the start on the bot lane, but after that, he was on point, I feel, for the exactly. rest of the game. And just won those team fights and kind of carried them, was able to shut down that Mundo as well, which was getting a little yes. bit of an issue early on in the game. Definitely Ergo for the MVP for me as well. Um, he just played so well during the mid-game team mm -hmm. fights, uh, going in, utilizing his passive in the five-man team fights, and then carrying his team from that lost yeah. team fight in the mid-game, and then turning it around 2v5, and just um, fear beyond death in the Baron pit, immense CC onto like, everyone. Just perfect yeah. plays mm -hmm. pretty much coming out of the Ergo. Yeah, definitely. So congratulations to Hey, I'm Yellow, I believe, <laughs> getting our little caster MVP award. And on that note, I just, I'm sorry, time to say goodbye for week eight here. Uh, there are two more weeks of seasonal play to go here at the University of Queensland. So things are really getting down to the wire right now. Obviously, SPCC still on top. KG4, I'm not sure if they're still undefeated just because we don't have the results of those no, games of yet. But I have to assume if they're continuing on the tear, they are still hot on the colors trail, yeah, which course. is going to lead to some exciting ending games. I'm going to not sure we're going to be seeing KG4 until the last week. Uh, we well, have maybe something even in playoffs. We don't know yet. We don't know yet because I, I do believe we have something special planned for you all next week. So please stick with us. Once again, a big thank you to the University of Queensland for helping us put this on, and a huge thank you to George right now for coming in and yeah. casting with us today. Yeah, no problem. It was a fun experience. It was really great. I, should I call you Mr. Atar instead of George? Nine point nine five Atar. Yeah. Yeah, fake, but <laughs> call me that. <laughs> uh, we thank you very much for watching. We'll be live back here at around four thirty next Tuesday. So uh, thank you very much for watching, and we'll uh, see you tomorrow. Good night.